Good morning. Are you ready to celebrate? Are you ready to celebrate now? I didn't hear you. Join hands now with our brothers and sisters while we prepare for the prayer that's going to come in just a second from Nick. There may be all the requests and prayers on the wall. He would have requests also in that basket. As we leave, or by the time we leave today, and we will take it to our prayer survey here. Okay, Nick, here is it. Thank you, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If we can all take a breath, just feel the love that's going through this room. It's exquisite. We say good morning, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for getting us here safely so that we can spend this time with our community and our family. Dear Lord, we want to send a special prayer for those that are not with us this morning. Please touch them and let them know that they are loved. Lord, thank you for all of your blessings that you gave us this week. Thank you for the work that we have and the food that we have, the transportation, for our safe passage through our lives. Lord, thank you so much. Please bless our children. Keep them out of harm's way. We are so blessed. We want to thank you so much for this family that we have and our friends. Lord, thank you. Please let us do your work in this world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. 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 Namaste. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Would you remain standing, please? This is Glide. And we do a lot of things on our feet here. This is time for our community song. Everybody in the audience is invited to sing. The words are on the wall. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little
Thank you, thank you. Now, brothers and sisters, turn around and greet each other. Say hello to your brothers and sisters. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Reedy Williams. That was Reedy Williams who leads us in song. Good morning. My name is uh, Janice Marikitani. We wanted to let you know that uh, Pastor Douglas Fitch is in Iowa speaking at a conference, and I'm sure we'll see him back soon from Iowa. Um, we are favored this morning to hear from our young people. Now, we have a lot of wonderful programs for teenagers and children. We have a child care center for infants also. But I think one of the most exciting programs that we have for young people is this wonderful teen choir directed by Vernon Bush. Good morning, Glide. How's everybody doing? Mm, we've got a special treat today. I want to say, um, as a footnote, I didn't say it in the morning service. Um, I'm actually going to Amsterdam to sing. And trust me, I'm going to take the spirit of Glide with me for a whole month. And I wanted to let to know that teens, if you're out there, we need you. Um, we're going to have a short rehearsal after this service in the Janice Maricatani room. So those teens who are interested, please come. And then we're going to resume August 10th, which is that Sunday. Okay? The teens are going to dance today. And in the spirit of poetry and love and music and drum, we're going to celebrate life. And they're going to do a song called Stomp.
BTC. exciting week. The Best of the Bay event last Thursday night, an auction that was hosted by the San Francisco Magazine and Glide Church as a benefit was hugely successful and it was such fun. It was really, really a great event this year. And we know that we've raised well over $300,000. <laughs> largely to the auction item of lunch with Warren Buffett, which brought in $250,100 from the highest bidder. It's just amazing. It's awesome. Um, probably, well, I heard that Warren's first advice to his lunchies will be that maybe if they want to increase their portfolio, that they shouldn't pay $250,000 for lunch. <laughs> but I'm sure he will say, unless, unless it's for a good cause, like Glide Church. <laughs> and he said such wonderful things about Glide and about Cecil, and I said, wow, you know, that's better than Michael Jackson endorsing Coca-Cola. It's really, it's great. So, um, life is just a miracle, isn't it? Anyway, we had a great time, and of course the Glide Ensemble brought down the house. Because the Glide Ensemble fills our souls and moves our feet. We know this group just can't be beat. Yeah, the Glide Ensemble and Change Band.
can you forgive me when I've often gone astray? How can you think of me when I do things my way? Turning my back on you, the one who loved me first, seeking my own desires, renewing worldly thirst. You told me you would keep me, but I turned it away. I failed you so much now I don't know what to say Using the same excuse That I am just a man You tell me you have been there And hold your
Dave Scott on trumpet, Joel Barron on trombone, and Charles McNeil on saxophone. And now we're going to have a baptism. This is a very special baptism this morning. Yes. All right, all right. Hello there. Hello there. Jeff and Julie are a have played a major role in our Glide Ensemble. They've been there and been here and will continue to be here. And you met here, that's right, you met here right up there. They met right up there. And Paul is going to join the Glide Ensemble next week. Peter, yeah, everybody's here, right? Okay. Where's the water? Come in, Paul. Uh, this is an act of coming together for cleansing and for opening up new possibilities. And of course, Paul, the child, will grow here, I'm sure, or wherever, but our love will always be with him and with this family especially. They're a very special family, very much. So Paul, that's right, Rita, hold it up there. I want to baptize you in the name of the one who comes as liberator, who frees us, that we might love each other and love everybody. The one who says yes rather than no. Our God, amen. Amen. but one of the greatest miracles that we have living here is Ruth Jones. And it's her birthday and she's 97 years old. Come up here, Ruth.
I love you. You've done so much for me. You've helped me all these years. And I, without pain right now, I've enjoyed being here. I've enjoyed everybody. I've enjoyed the community and all the organizations, the mayors of both cities. I love them. They've helped me. I love you. Amen. I love you, Ruth. You gotta write a book, Ruth. You gotta, you gotta tell us how you do it. Although I think we know. It's that love, isn't it? Yeah. I have a brother that uh, I walk in his shadow quite often because I go places and he goes with me. And uh, Two days ago was his birthday. Reedy Williams, where are you? Right here. to acknowledge a visitor uh, in our midst, uh, Mr. Robert Scott, the State Treasurer of New Hampshire. Are you here this morning? Oh, yeah? No? Okay. Maybe his plane has not arrived. Maybe he ran off. I don't know. <laughs> we have uh, some special guests here this morning, and we're so happy to greet Nancy Pelosi Prada and her family. Nancy? I'm sure you recognize Nancy, who looks a little bit like her mom, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi Jr. used to work for Moe's Kitchen, and she helped us raise money through Moe's Kitchen for several years. Thank you, and greetings. And Jan, I'm always, pr I married this couple, but uh, they are so much a part of Glide, it's really... They, and of course, they're both stars in the world. But our own Renell is here and Tommy. Come on, stand up. Stand up. Kiss FM, am I right about that? Yeah. And also the voice of the San Francisco Giants. Yeah. And she helps us out, or they help us out all the time. She has recently had a death in her family. Father died, but uh, here she is. We love you. We're with you. And we'll always be with you. Thank you. And that's her mother right there, Renelle's mother. We love you and our condolences. Well, June Jordan has said, each of us needs to begin the difficult work of love. Each day, for each individual, and each laborious encounter. Love ourselves so we can become able to love other people without fear. Amen. 
and expand our circle of trust and humanity. We would like to invite you to become a member of this community that strives to engage in the difficult work of love, reaching out to the margins, to those who are poor, to those who need support, facing our fears and accepting our differences no matter who we are so we can enlarge this community, this circle of humanity. Won't you join us and go through these doors after the celebration to the Maya Angelou living room and talk to a wonderful group of membership folks who will tell you what it means to become a member of GLIDE. There's Charlotte Kwam, the chair who's been here for quite a few years, Charlotte. Thank you, please join us. Now we come to a very important part of the celebration and in spite of Warren Buffett's support this past week, we still need your money and this is the offering time. To talk to us about that is Dorian Leslie. Dorian? Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Good morning, Glide Ensemble. Good morning, Glide. Thank you for all the visitors I see here. Um, we started off our celebration today by being asked by Cecil, do you want to celebrate? Do you want to celebrate life? And uh, of course I said yes, and I think pretty much everybody else said yes. We were all jumping and singing and everything. So we did say yes. Um, but I'm gonna kind of break down a little bit about what I believe Glide has helped me discover about celebrating life. Uh, the ushers are prepared in the back at this moment. Um, I found out some things about celebrating life. Um, I also woke up at 5.30 this morning going, oh boy, I hope I write all these down, or should I turn the light on, should I go back to sleep? Um, but it, it stayed with me, obviously, and I, um, the things that I'm grateful for, are sp especially this year, um, is realizing that I've had a chance to celebrate life. I've had a chance through birthdays and, and uh, just various other times, holidays, to share time with the friends that I've made here at Glide. Um, I know a lot of our congregation is made up and consists of uh, people who brought their friends to Glide. And they said, oh boy, you're not gonna get me to church. And then all of a sudden they start going even more than you. And they're more in the know than you are. And you're like, oh boy, I better go back to church a little bit more often. So there's, there's the celebration of occasion. Uh, but even in the, even in the midst of unfortunate events, uh, the deaths of some of our friends and family, um, you have to admit that you have to celebrate their lives. So I hope that, uh, uh, certainly I know that Rennell is celebrating the life of her father and um, we should uh, just send our prayers to them. So with the celebrating of life, so far you've got, okay, what? I can't do it alone. So you can't celebrate life alone. All right. Just in case you thought you could, you can't have a party in your head and celebrate life alone. <laughs> you gotta drag at least one friend with you, and maybe a relative if they're nice to you that week. You just, you can't celebrate alone. Uh, the other thing I found out about celebrating life is that you can't do it without love. Um, it, it was a hard journey to come to uh, realizing that the love that I share with these people um, <laughs> is just so special. <laughs> Some days more special than others, but we love each other. We love each other greatly, and that is why we're able to sing to the praise of God. That's why we're able to celebrate life with you and help, hopefully that you are joining us in our celebration of love and of God. So we got a couple things here about the celebration of life. You can't do it alone, gotta love somebody. Okay, maybe there's one more thing. Well, you know I was gonna get to that. Um, you can't celebrate life without a feeling of generosity, because you know what, it's gonna be automatic. You have to give in order to receive, you have to give in order to celebrate life. Um, Glide does that every single day of the year. What are they giving? They're giving out meals so people are not hungry, they're giving out job training, they're giving out low-income housing, 
They're giving out uh, support uh, for people with AIDS or HIV. They're giving out love. And it's that generosity that makes this celebration happen. And it's going to be your generosity that helps us help other people to do it. You can't celebrate life if you are hungry. You can't celebrate life if you don't know where you're going to sleep tonight. You can't celebrate life if you're worried about where your kids are and you're not able to take care of them. So help us, help others celebrate life. The generosity is there. I know we're all having fun and celebrating life together. So we're together, we're loving, and now we're giving. So the ushers are gonna come forward and collect your gifts. I really appreciate your gifts today, thank you. Gosh, there are some Sundays, the music has just touched my heart and uh, hopefully it's touched yours, so give a couple more bucks. Um, <laughs> some amazing soloists up here and yeah. that we are fortunate. We are blessed to have such amazing musical talent and I know I am personally blessed that they let me sing with them Amen. each time. Thanks, gang, I really, thank you, thank you. All right then, let's get to these announcements. I know there's wrestling, take your time, write out a check, it can be done, you know. If, you, if the basket misses you by some chance, you can always go downstairs and, and we can uh, celebrate life with you and your check down there. <clears throat> and foreign currency is okay. All right, here we go with the announcements, gang. Uh, lots of uh, fun information, informative stuff, and you will have to govern yourselves accordingly, as they would say in my old church. The Glide Hope Line offers supportive listening, prayer, spiritual support, and nurture to the Glide family in times of crisis and celebration. You can call them up if you're not feeling good, and by all means, call them up if you're feeling great, and just share that with them. Uh, if you or someone you know are in need of supportive presence, please call 415-674-6000, extension 8888. There will be an informational support group for people with HIV and or hepatitis C on Tuesday, July 15th, and also Tuesday, July 22nd from 6 to 7 p.m. If you or someone you know would like information on HIV or hepatitis C resources, please sign up at the volunteer table to attend this group. Glide needs more mentors and volunteers for the children, teen, and senior program. Talk about celebrating life. We're keeping seniors connected, we're taking care of children, and uh, what about those teens, huh? They are definitely <laughs> celebrating life. I'm gonna learn how to do that. You're not too old to learn that dance. Okay, um, we need those volunteers. Uh, please check on meeting dates and, and uh, talk to the people at the volunteer table. Living Through Our Losses, a grief workshop will be held on Sunday, July 20th from 1 to 4 p.m. in room 206. Uh, this group provides a safe environment in which to share our losses with others and gain emotional and spiritual support. The Glide Ambassadors meet today in Freedom Hall at 1 p.m. Join us to spread God's message of love, diversity, justice, and recovery with visitors and friends around the world. All are welcome. Refreshments will be served. The Senior Wellness Group will meet uh, every Wednesday from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, on the second floor, room 201. Let's get real group. We'll meet at 1 p.m. today in room 201. Join your Glide brothers and sisters to share what's going on in your life. Everyone is welcome because we are all in need of some form of recovery, or we're already in recovery here. Ah, celebration Recovery Group, yes. Um, Prayer group meets every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. in Freedom Hall. Come get your prayer on. Bible study meets every Thursday, 6 p.m. in room 206. Study the barbecue Bible. Uh, we're going to get to some, there's another reason uh, or another way you can celebrate life, and we're about to come up to it in a moment. So, tapes by Pastor Fitch, Janice Mirkatani, and Reverend Williams. A new three audio series by Pastor Fitch titled Letting Go and Letting Go Even More. Uh, <laughs> CDs and videos of the Glide Ensemble, including our most recent Sounds of Hope. And just in case you really needed some other reasons to celebrate life, Stacy's going to help me out here. Yeah. Glide t shirts, sweatshirts, caps, sports bottles, note cards, and books by Reverend Williams, Janice Mirkatani are all available in Freedom Hall. Yeah. 
All of the proceeds benefit Glide programs. Stacy is someone who celebrates life each and every day. And I'm certainly going to suggest to all of you, if you really want to learn how to celebrate life, If you really want to know how to celebrate life, this is your chance. You're going to go downstairs to Freedom Hall and pick up one of those sweatshirts and practice at home. <laughs> you too can learn how to celebrate life just like Stacy does every moment of every day. Thank you. So, uh, any other information you want to know about, please visit our website at glide.org. And, you know, we really thank you for your help in helping others. Thank you for your gifts today. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you. Stacey, you're in good form. After we hear one more number from the Glide Ensemble, we will hear from a man who for 40 years has been fighting justice, fighting for justice ceaselessly. It's getting to be a long day. Accepting all people unconditionally and loving life passionately. The man who swept me off my feet and still does. Cecil Williams. Morning, Glad. Morning. Morning.
some music. You're the best group 
on a Sunday morning anywhere in America. Don't ask me for a raise, please. Not right now. That will be coming one of these days. One of these days. You've heard that before. One of these days. Just one of these days. One of these days. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, what's happening, man? Huh? What's happening? Huh? What? Where'd you get that cap from? <laughs> oh, this from me, Joanne. Come up here. Yeah, come up here. Come up here. Yeah. Wave at Say hello. Is that yours? This yours? Oh, really? Uh, uh, right on. This is your son's baby. Your daughter. Well, come get him, will you please? <laughs> Not gonna have him upstage me. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I know when to stop. Oh, yes. Upstage me, man. I won't be able to say a word. Joanna is our sign of this Sunday. I'm going to try to make the word, which is the word that flows from this book. By the way, this is a Bible, but it's the contemporary version by Eugene Peterson. And they put a lot of color on it to draw your attention to it, to get you to open it up. And it's contemporary. The words are contemporary, of course. I uh, find it difficult to use the King James Version. There's somebody that agrees with me right there. I find it difficult to use even the Revised Standard Version. There are a lot of versions of the Bible, if you want to know the, the truth. And some use the King's English, and some use the Hood language. Some use all, ki all kinds of things. But I want to say that be very careful uh, about the book. We call it the Book of Life. That's what this book is about, the Bible. It's about life. It's about the book of life. As I said last Sunday, that this being the book of life means that it brings us to life. But I can be very upfront to say to you, many of the stories don't bring things to life for me. Uh, it's because when you get into the situation to start begetting and begotten, <laughs> I can't get the gotten and the getting together. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I am concerned about, though, is making these words come to life All right. so that people will understand that they don't have to use the literal interpretation All right. of the Bible. Don't be literate, you know, the literal interpretation. Every word is, every word is right. Uh, this is where I think a lot of people make the mistake because what the literal interpretation does, it draws us in rather than draws us out because it limits us. It keeps us from expanding our understanding of what the writers are saying here and why they're saying what they're saying as they say it. Okay? Thank you. Where are you from, by the way? So the important thing is to make this speak to us, these words. And so therefore, this is one thing that Peterson has done. 
we, we, we often say things, by the way, that we don't mean anyway. And what, what he's trying to get us to do is say those things that we really mean because we're going to do something with them and about them. And so we say, well, we believe in justice. To know God is to know justice, we say. But we don't act that way. And that's what I'm talking about. How do we act out what we say we believe when we say we believe it? And so I come to you this morning to just simply say that the life that we experience out of this book, this life-giving book, sheds light, gives light to us. So we're much more understanding, loving, generous, kind. We create more justice, righteousness, because there is a light that brings the information to us. And the light happens to be not like only Moses and the prophets of the Old Testament, but the light essentially in the New Testament is the light that comes in Jesus. Right. My God, what a light. Yeah. What a light. Yeah. I guess the question I want to raise first and foremost is, how good is my word? How good is your word? Can you stand... By your word? Where are you, by the way? <laughs> I know where you are. That's right. You're the person I paid to clap every once in a while. How, can you stand by your word? Can we stand with the word? Can we make the word that we say is the word that we talk about and believe in? Act it out? Can we act out what we say? Because if we can't, then we're fooling ourselves and fooling everybody else. Well, maybe. We don't fool folks that much. So what I'm trying to get us to do is stop trying to fool people about what we say we believe in. You know? And also, those things that drive us so hard to limit our understanding of other people. And it drives us to hell and back. All right, amen. Because we are so, so into the people we're going to put down. Because if we put them down, then we've got something going for us where we don't have to expand our understanding, not only of that people, but any people that may be different from what we are. <laughs> My plea then is that we expand ourselves. We just don't take literally what somebody said they read in the Bible. All right. uh, we just don't take literally what somebody said they heard that was in the Bible. Uh -huh. Here is something that I hope will bring life to you. The life light it's called. This is John's gospel. John was a preacher, I understand. And so here's what he said about creation. The word was first. See, he didn't say, and God created, uh-uh. No, he said, the word was first. The word present to God, God present to the word. The word was God. In readiness for God, from day one, from day one, folks, the Word was God. And God was first by bringing to the world something that was quite different, a new creation, if you please, a new understanding, if you please, a new way of living one's life, a, a, a new way of changing ourselves. A new way of standing up saying, I really am somebody. Watch me. That watch me is very critical. Watch me. In other words, I just don't move, but I groove. <laughs> See? 
I mean, don't expect me to walk around and look like I'm dead, dull, and dry. No, I'm alive, you see. And because I am alive, I want you to know that there's a light that comes that lightens up my life. So I don't have to guess work at everything. I, I got a light that shines so brightly, I can say, oh my God, look at here. How could this happen? How could, how could you happen? Why are you here in the first place? You didn't have to be here, but there's a light that brought you here. You don't know this, but I'm telling you now. There's a light that brought you here because you heard that this is a wild, crazy place. And so you are here to get a little wild and a little crazy and to fly like angels and be yourself and stand up for justice and righteousness. That's what you're here for. John says that the word is with us. Now remember, last Sunday I took this book, held it up, and said that this is the book of life. Today I take this book and hold it up and say that this is the book of content. It is the book of words. It is the word that now comes to life. And so you can live it, you can live it, you can live it. Oh yeah, you can live it. However, when it comes to life, here's the critical thing. This word does not stay out up above us. This word is what theologians call incarnate. I don't know what that means. But I'm saying what they mean. Well, I know what it means. It means Jesus coming to us. Okay? But here it is. Here's what he says. That the word comes to our neighborhood. Uh-oh. Now just think, Jesus coming to our neighborhood. What in the world does Jesus have to do with our neighborhood where we live? We don't want Jesus there. He start disrupting things. Jesus, you know, he start doing things that we don't want to do. We'd rather see Jesus on television. Yes, sir. Than to confront Jesus with our brothers and our sisters. And so what we do is we make believe, living in a make believe world, that if Jesus comes, he can just wait until we get ready for him. And so my brothers and my sisters, to be honest with you, Jesus may be here this morning. That's right. And if Jesus is here this morning, some of you, no matter what we do, are going to sit there and say, well, this is kind of a different thing. And I don't want to feel nothing. And I don't want to see nothing. And I don't want nothing to grab me. But if you're ready, my brothers and my sisters, if you're really ready and open to all possibilities, if Jesus comes, it gives you a sense of style and rhythm. It gives you a sense of talking your talk and a walking your walk, you see. If Jesus is here, you're not going to be the same person when you, when you came in here. You're going to leave from here yelling and screaming, that's some place, and those are some people. Oh, yeah. And the word became alive. Which means that it's the end. It, 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 word means the end. It means stop. It means hello. All right, let me put it another way. When we're in our recovery groups, and we get ready to pass it, when we get through speaking, we say word, like, okay, it's your turn. Or I'm, get, I'm stopped. We need, some of us need to say word more. Because <laughs> we talk too much. And somebody in the group needs to say, word, so we'll know it's time to stop. Word means getting ready for something else. 
I, I'm through. I've done it. I've told the truth. And so therefore, word or uh, hello. Have you ever gotten anybody's attention in a quiet place? Like if you were in some church where they were always quiet and you'd yell out, hello. And they would put you out. There ain't no putting out here unless. <laughs> My brothers and my sisters, what I'm trying to say to you this morning is that we need to expand our understanding. Uh, there was a debate the other day, I, I was around for a short time. What is spirituality? Well, spirituality, if you really want to get in the spirit, read the Psalms. Oh, Lord. Great poetry, great stories, great justice and righteousness. You know, to walk humbly with our God. I mean, the psalmists are really out front. They are there. They're, they're living it. They're, they're letting people know. And, and when old Moses go, let's go back to the beginning. Oh, Moses. I, I, I'm convinced that there are certain events that take place and that are taking place in the Old and New Testaments that took place that could turn us on in a way that we've never been turned on before. I mean, you don't, when you read old Moses' story, you don't have to, have to smoke anything. When you read old Moses' story, you don't have to shoot up anything. When you read old Moses' story and how he freed the people by going to the Red Sea. Have you ever been to the Red Sea? If you really want to get turned on, read that Moses' story about the Red Sea and how when they came up on it, as all waters were there that they could not cross. But all of a sudden, while they were waiting there, a miracle happened, like miracles happen in our lives today. We come up on things that say to us, you are different, you got something going, get it going, keep it going, keep on working, don't give up. And all of a sudden, the river parts and the water moves back and you cross the Red Sea. Man, you can't beat that kind of high. The psalmist says, by your words, I can see who I am and where I am going. I inherited your book on living. It's mine forever. What a gift, what a gift, what a gift. How happy I am now and it makes me feel good. Your words all add up to the truth. And the truth is that good news is here. The good news that comes at this time is that stop talking about folks and putting them down. The good news that comes is, if somebody comes, don't sit them down. All right. You get up here and let somebody sit you down, and you'll see how it hurts. See, we don't know how we can hurt each other by the use of words. It, 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 words are not taken from the dictionary, they're taken from our heart and our mind. I'm wondering how we can get our mind and our heart together where when we get ready to say something, it will come from the heart and it will be those words that lift us up and make us whole and human. Why do we have to try to destroy a brother, a sister, or a group of folks? Why do we have to make it, you know, all homosexuals, all gay folks, all bisexuals, transgender, all folk, they are all, all what? Say that. All, right. all what? Come on. Just like any of the rest of them. Sometimes even better than the rest of them. <laughs> I was honored, I want to be honest with you, I was really honored when the man came out and we went to, Jen and I went to Pride Parade, and he walked up to me and said, uh, 
You really, I know you want me to say pretty. I know. You really cute. You should be gay. That made me feel good. Yeah, he said, you're too cute to be hit straight. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep on looking. I'm looking. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad that I don't have to get caught up and hung up when Stacy does his <laughs> sus. Now you know if this were to happen in any other church in America, Stacy would be gone. Stacy would be gone. Goodbye, Stacy. Here's what I want to say. See, I'm so convinced that the word is so alive that I don't have to worry about trying to get Jerry Farwell straight. Because right. right. he's already so straight, he doesn't even know what straight and crooked is. <laughs> Maybe he's an all, I tell you, he's a very all, you know, a very difficult person. That's, that's how the Bible can squeeze, you see. I'm talking about putting the Bible out there where it won't squeeze folks out. Right. I'm talking about a Bible that would include everybody. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now I want to read to you a very, very important short thing here. This is from Matthew. You have minds like a snake pit. How do you suppose what you say is worth anything when you are so foul-minded? It's your heart, not the dictionary, that gives meaning to your words. A good person produces good deeds and words season after season. An evil person is a blight on the orchard. Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation or words can be your damnation. And so I dream you together to accept everybody. Don't make no difference. They can't, they can't get you out of existence. Don't you know that? Don't you know, don't you know whose word you are in? Don't you know whose light you are walking by? Don't you know whose love has extended to you and everybody else? Do you know you are free today? Free, my brothers and my sisters, to be yourself, to love yourself, and to love everybody. You're free today. Now let us take the exodus and be about our lives. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Reverend Cecil Williams.
Sometimes in the near future, we will have a major announcement. And we want to thank Warren Buffett in regards to this major announcement. If it takes place, you will be very happy. Uh, he's, he's a man of his word. He lives his word. And I want to thank him for thinking about the line. And we do. Thank you very much. Would everybody stand, please? Take the hand of the person next to you. We thank you for coming. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome today. Whoa, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall. Inviting you to um, get some birthday cake downstairs in Freedom Hall for Ruth and Reedy. We've heard the word from Cecil. The word is the living flame that thaws the frozen sea within us. Let the word jump into our flesh and become acts of love in the world. Let your light shine. <laughs>